Alright guys, here's my 9773 Power Stroke. And today we're gonna be doing a up pipe and turbo install on it. I uh, had to take the turbo off because I had a fuel leak up here. Let's get the light. Right there on that fitting. That fitting had come loose and we had a leak. So I had to pull the turbo, pull the up pipes off to get to the stupid thing to change it. Not change it, to pull it out and reseal it. And so I was like, huh, while we're at it, might as well put new up pipes. And then I, start, I got to feeling on the turbo and I was like, maybe we should just do a turbo rebuild. And the wheel was a little bit beat up. So I put a four by four uh, riffraff uh, wheel in it. Uh, supposed to be a little better. We'll see. Here are the old up pipes. There's old collector. There's a uh, driver side up pipe, passenger side. What I did to remove them, passenger side, I just cut it off right there. And uh, driver side, I started to take the bolts out and then it just pulled right out. So that was that removal. And these, we just torched every one of them off. It was really easy to get to. Since I got the inner fenders taken off, fixing all the rest, it was easy to get to them. They're just right there. Right there. So first, what you're gonna wanna do is tighten the passenger side up pipe up. Tighten it up off the truck before you put it in the truck. Tighten it to the collector. Get that nice and tight and how it's supposed to be. And then you drop it down in there and you just put the screws on right here you put them on real loose then you go ahead and put the driver's side one up to there and uh, loosely put these screws in there bolts and then do the same down here on the manifold and you say why the heck do you leave them loose well because when you put the turbo on you're going to want to be able to wiggle it see how i can wiggle this i got some moving room yeah if you don't have that wiggle room because these bellows then you won't be able to most likely put your turbo on and so what this will allow you to do you'll get the turbo on and then you'll tighten all them connections up and those bellows will actually stretch and expand making it fit properly as you can see we got our new uh o-rings in there and uh, we're about ready for a turbo install. And uh, I put this on there because there's a little wear on that line. So if that'll work, hopefully it'll keep it from wearing anymore and tearing that thing up. Because I'm cheapo. That's a $250 line right there. And uh, with this fuel leak right here, this is a very uncommon leak. Uh, it was hard to figure out what the heck it was. The fuel was running down this up pipe and down the back of the block and down over the transmission and like on the drive shaft and i was like what the heck where the heck is this coming from and previously i had this leak and i replaced this fuel pump so i thought it was this line but if it's this line then it's draining there right there there's a hole there and that goes to the passenger side so if it's coming down the driver's side, it's this. So that's a pain in the butt to fix. But it is what it is. Now what I don't understand is why don't they have the studs? Like on the old collector, you have studs on the bottom and bolts on the top. Why is there no studs? Is it easier? Probably, we'll find out. Now the four bolts that hold the pedestal on are 10 millimeter. And in case you're watching this before you take the turbo off your truck, I suggest you pick up a set of these. Because I don't know if you can do it without it. Because when this is in here and you're trying to take that turbo off, there is so little space right here that you have, you pretty much have to have them to get these bottom two off. All right, we got all of them started in there. And uh, we're going to try to get this back plate started and probably 
well, not finished out. We're going to see if we can start it. And if we can, then I think I'm going to take it back off. Because I can get to this back one really easy with this push back. And it's really nice. So I think I'm going to leave this unbolted until I get that nice and tight. Alright guys, this is how I'm reaching that back bolt on this side. Got me a little swivel, a 10 mil. I'm a little handy dandy screwdriver. Alright, I got all that snugged up. Now I'm going to give the final tightening to it. And then we're going to try that back piece. Alright, I got the back two pretty tight. Now we're going to move on to the back four bolts. That uh, bolts the collector to the back of the turbo. Alright guys, so I got them all started pretty good. I have this set up here. I got a Milwaukee uh, electric ratchet with a pretty big extension. And I got a 14 millimeter uh, swivel heads, swivel socket, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I got them snugged up. Now I got to get them nice and tight. And uh, we should be ready to roll. All right, guys. I think she's put on there real good. Oh, wait. I got to tighten these front two. That one and this one. And then she'll be good. I got them nice and tight. The top ones I just got with a uh, extension and this 14 millimeter socket right here. So they're both 14 millimeter. The original ones, the top, I believe, they were either 14 or 15, I can't remember. And the bottom were 13, I know. So that's how the old ones were. And uh, I think this way is easier. I think it is easier. It's definitely easier to line up because I've watched guys uh, have to line it up with the studs and it could kind of be a pain in the butt but this it dropped right into place after fighting with it for a while of course but we got it on now have to connect to the down pipe and uh i'll show y'all all that let's get on it yeah taking them bottom two of those off when i was removing the turbo was like the most scared thing I've ever done in my life because I had the swiveling socket I had that big extension and so I had the ratchet out here about right here and I had a four foot pipe on that thing pushed as hard as I could on both of them and the first one scared me to death because when it broke loose it made this this popping noise that was it was super loud. I thought I broke something, but it came loose. And so did the other one, so we were good. If I would have had this, it probably would have made it a little easier, but I didn't have this at the time, so. All right, so I do not have the Allens that are needed to tighten this side up. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow, and uh, we'll get this thing all tightened up. All right, guys, so here is my setup. One extension, two extension, three extension. And yeah, it ain't gonna focus, but it's a snap on six, I think. Yeah, six millimeter. It's got the swivel. You have to have the swivel, or else you've got to take the cross member off and lower your transmission. I think you have to with this one, the five speed. I don't know if the automatic's different or not. Who knows? I had this running it up, and then I had this tightening it up. So as y'all can see, here's what we're looking at. There's that one. That's the one that you might have to remove the track or remove the cross member for. Come on, focus. There you go. And there's the other one. It ain't too horribly bad. I could have used another extension. So now it's time to do the bottom bolts on both sides. The little side is a 10 mil, and this side is a half inch, I think. So I think we got her good and tight. I had this on the back side up here like that. And here's what I got on this thing. Extension, swivel, 10 millimeter deep well. Got them both tight. Uh, I don't know exactly how tight you're supposed to do it, but I gave her some ugly duggies, I'm telling you. She shouldn't go anywhere, but we'll see. All right, guys, we got this side nice and tight. Here's our setup for this side. We 
We got the little extension, the big extension, the swivel, and then the half. And that's what got them in there. Man, I cannot do without this Milwaukee Impact. I lived so long without having any impacts. My dad's a real old school. <laughs> so when I got this thing, buddy, it makes life so much easier. So much easier. My gosh. Now, guys, I'm such a genius. I about went and got stuff to start the truck without putting the little uh, Y or V2, whatever you want to call it here. Yeah, I'm a genius. All right, so with this thing, there is a technique to it. So you're gonna wanna start the short side first and then do the long. And you'll have to kind of take your finger along the bottom side of it and kind of move the, this out of the way. And it goes on there pretty slick. All right, so we got all that done. Here was my setup on that. The ratchet, extension, and uh, a thing that goes from 3 8 to a quarter and then a uh, eight millimeter, I think it is. So, uh, she's about ready to start. You'll probably tell me, why didn't you clamp that? I kinda wanna hear a little bit straight pipe. So we're just gonna send it. All right, we got that set on there just so it's not sucking straight garbage from right there. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna go find some batteries.